The emperors have stepped up their defense now that their eggs have hatched. But the mob is quick to join forces with other thieves, if it means a chance at an emperor's nest. The giant cichlid will dig out a hole, using that versatile mouth as both shovel and bucket. Then it moves its wriggling brood to safety, mouthful by mouthful. Taking their young into their mouths was a small evolutionary step. Keeping them there was a breakthrough. It combined the cichlid's best asset, that adaptable mouth, with their greatest talent caring for their young. The results have been... amazing. As both nest and nursery, mom's mouth proved to be the safest place in the lake. For as long as a month, mothers will shelter their young this way, protecting them during the most vulnerable times of their lives. Mouth brooding has been so successful that over a thousand species of cichlids everywhere now raise their young this way. A pair spawns, the colorful male and plain female stimulating each other towards this consummate act. As soon as she lays a few eggs, the mother sucks them up. So eager is she to get them into the safety of her mouth, she leaves little time for the male to fertilize them. So the male flashes his egg dummies, bright patches of color on his fin that mimic the female's own eggs. She tries in vain to pick them up, and each time she does, she gets a mouthful of sperm instead. By the time she tires, all her eggs will have been fertilized, internally, but in her mouth. Mouth brooding is an elegant solution to the cichlid obsession for safeguarding their young. But in the evolutionary arms race, there are always those who try to turn the best laid plans of others to their own benefit. These catfish have evolved into parasites of mouth brooders. Each time the mouth brooders start to spawn, catfish swarm in to eat their eggs. Mouth brooder eggs are the perfect food, extra large and yolky. But the catfish aren't just eating eggs. They're also dropping their own. They're exploiting the female cichlid's eagerness to pick up eggs. For she gathers up the catfish eggs along with her own. Unknowingly, she is committing herself to a horrible sort of surrogate motherhood. The catfish depart, never knowing what becomes of their own young. Inside her mouth, the catfish hatch first. Armed with cavernous mouths and voracious appetites, the catfish turn on the cichlid fry, devouring them alive. By the time she's ready to release her young, the deceit is complete. All that remain are a few very fat, young catfish. For the catfish, the cichlid is the only mother they will ever know. The female mouth brooder also fails to recognize the switch. She treats the little catfish tenderly, as if they were her own, 
oblivious to the fact that they ate each and every one of her own offspring. She scoops them up to protect them at the first hint of danger. As much as she might like to, she cannot mother them for long. While feasting in the dark, the young catfish not only grew plump, they grew spines. The spines lock fast, designed to jam in a predator's mouth and protect the slow swimming catfish. Even at this age, the spines prevent the young catfish from becoming morsels for the mob. 